everyone, this is Mr. A. Um, I want to take a look at special right triangles with you today. So these are pretty nifty. Uh, there's two kinds of triangles that fall into this category. There's what's called the isosceles right triangle and the 30-60-90 triangle. And there's some nice patterns that all of these triangles follow, right? So any isosceles right triangle is going to be a, a similar triangle to this one. And so this pattern that we're going to develop here is going to follow for all isosceles rights. And similarly, this other pattern is going to follow for all 30, 60, 90. So this is really handy to know. They can save you a lot of work sometimes. And let's just go ahead and jump right in with the isosceles right triangle. So just to give you some background, this comes from taking a square and then cutting it in half, right? Putting the diagonal right across so you create an isosceles right triangle. And the first question we want to ask ourselves is what is this side, the hypotenuse? Well, we know that Pythagorean theorem is going to apply since it's a right triangle. So that means that leg squared plus leg squared, which is to say x squared plus x squared, has to equal to the hypotenuse squared. And then this is an equation we can solve for the hypotenuse. We have 2x squared equals hypotenuse squared. By taking the square root of both sides, we get hypotenuse equal to square root of 2x squared. And then we can simplify this radical a little bit, right? What we end up with is hypotenuse is equal to just x times the square root of 2. And this pattern here is the pattern we're going to use for all 45, 90 right triangles. Whatever the side of the leg of the triangle is, then the hypotenuse is always that number times the square root of 2. So the pattern is x, x, x rad 2. Let's take a look at how we'd apply that. So here we have two example problems, both isosceles right triangles. And this first one, we're told that the legs are 6. So if that's 6, then of course that means that leg is also 6. And normally you would use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this hypotenuse is, but we already know that the hypotenuse has to be equal to whatever the leg is times the square root of 2. So I don't have to go through the Pythagorean theorem. Now I could, right? If I do 6 squared plus 6 squared equals x squared, then I have 36 plus 36 is x squared. Taking the square root, I get x is equal to the square root of 72. And I can simplify that by breaking it up into the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, which finally gets me to my 6 radical 2. But all of this is work we no longer need to do because the special right triangle allows us to jump right to the answer of 6 rad 2. Similarly over here, if the leg is 4 rad 2, then y has to be equal to whatever the leg is times the square root of 2. The exact same pattern that held over here. Well, what is square root of 2 times square root of 2? Well, all we're doing there is squaring the square root of 2, right? And if you square a square root, it undoes itself. Those are inverse operations. So what we have is here just y equals 4 times 2 which is to say 8. And that's all we need to do here. I don't need to go into Pythagorean theorem and square these sides to find the hypotenuse. I can just follow the pattern. Now it's not always this easy with a 4590. Here's another example of one. Notice this time the side that we have is the hypotenuse. The side I'm looking for is the leg. So I can't just take this and multiply it by rad 2 to find the hypotenuse. I have to be a little bit more clever. But it's still true that whatever x is if I multiply it by rad 2, I'm going to get 10, right? That's the pattern that has to follow, that whatever the leg is, if I multiply it by rad 2, I get the hypotenuse. So this is an equation that we can solve for x. There's a couple of ways to solve for it. So most people would divide by square root of 2 on both sides, maybe rationalize the denominator. I have my own kind of way of doing this. I like to think through it logically. So here's how I would think about this. Whatever x is, right? So this is x. When I multiply it by the square root of 2, I get 10. Well, think about that for a minute. There's a radical on the left-hand side of this equation. There is no radical on the right-hand side. How do you get rid of a radical? There's only one way. You have to square it. So there's got to be a square root of 2 inside of this parenthesis. Think about that a second. Make sure it makes sense to you. Right? The only way to get rid of that radical is to square it. So I have to multiply by a radical 2 so that this radical 2 and will cancel out with it. Right? So I'm squaring the square root of 2, and I'm just going to get 2. So now if radical 2 times radical 2 is 2, what do I still need to multiply by to get 10? Well, 5. And there's your answer. x equals 5 rad 2. Right? That's the number that if you multiply by square root of 2, you get 10. We can do the same thing over here. This time we're inside of a square, but it's essentially the same problem. This is a 45-90 right triangle. And also I'll just like uh, maybe highlight it so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the triangle that I'm focusing on. And it still has to be true that whatever that side is, x, when I multiply it by rad 2, I get 8. So again, if I just think logically through this, what would I have to multiply by rad 2 to get 8? 
Well, obviously there's no square root over here, which means I had to multiply it by at least a radical 2. That way, the radical is getting squared, so I'll lose the radical. Rad 2 times rad 2 is 2, so of course I still need to multiply by a 4 so that I get 8. And there's the x over here. It's simply 4 rad 2. Right? That's the number that when you multiply it by rad 2, you get 8. Now you may also notice there's a pattern here. We started with 10 and we ended up at 5 rad 2. We started at 8, ended up at 4 rad 2. So that's going to happen every time. If you think about it, it should be pretty clear why. Since there's always a rad 2 to begin with, we always have to multiply by a rad 2 to get rid of the radical, which means we're always going to have a factor of 2 in there. So in general, it's always going to be half of that number times rad 2, but you can just go through this little operation to figure it out. So that's pretty much all you have to worry about with a 45-90 triangle. The other special right is a 30-60-90 triangle. And this one's a little bit more interesting. So this actually comes from an equilateral triangle. So you can see that with the dotted lines, this is an equilateral here, meaning all of the original angles, this one, this one, and this one, are each going to be 60 degrees. And you can probably see now where it gets its name, the 30-60-90 triangle. We get a right angle and a 60 degree angle, which means this one is going to have to be a 30 degree angle. Now, I labeled this side 2x and this side x because if the original triangle was equilateral, then all the sides would be the same. So if I call this 2x, that means this is 2x, also means this is 2x. But because of the symmetry in an equilateral triangle, this perpendicular line, right, this altitude here, is also going to bisect the base, which means this piece over here is also x, right, there's your 2x for the side, and we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now again, we have the same problem. This is 2x, this is x. I don't know what this other piece of the triangle is. But this time it's a leg that I don't know. So again, Pythagorean theorem to the rescue. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So that would give me leg squared plus x squared equal to, careful here, this is going to be 4x squared. You have to multiply 2x by itself. And if I just take an x squared away from both sides, then what I have now is that leg squared equals 3x squared. Taking the square root of both sides, I get leg equal to the square root of 3x squared, and we can simplify that to leg equal to x rad 3. And now we have the pattern for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The sides are x, 2x, and x rad 3. And what you want to keep in mind with this triangle is you always look across from the 30, because that's where the x is. That's your simplest side. I'd like to think of this as a building block. Right, so if you know what this side is, then you can easily find the others. If you know what the side across from the 30 is, the hypotenuse is simply double it, and the other side is that same number times the square root of 3. So let's take a look at a couple of simple examples with a 30, 60, 90. So here you have a couple of triangles. As I said, you want to begin by looking across from the 30. We have a 4. So that's our building block. Then that tells me that the hypotenuse is going to be double that, right? 2 times 4, which is to say 8. And the other side, the side across from the 60, is going to be that building block, 4, times the square root of 3. It's that simple. That's all you got to do. Over here, again, we identify the 30-degree angle. We look across from it. This time, my building block is 7. So that tells me that the hypotenuse is 2 times 7, or 14. And the other side, the side across from the 60, is simply 7 times rad 3. My building block times the square root of 3. It's that easy. This is the great thing about special rights. Once you understand how to work with them, they're very, very quick. Now, it's not always this easy. Let's look at a little bit sort of a mid-level example with the 30, 60, 90. So we've got a couple of triangles, 30, 60, 90s again. Same as before. I always want you to look across from the 30. That's your building block. But this time I don't have a number. I have a variable x. Well, that's all right. Let's continue on anyway. I know that whatever this number is, the hypotenuse has to be double it. So that means that 2x equals 16. Well, if 2x is 16, then that means x equals 8, doesn't it? And now I've got my building block. Once I know the building block, the side across from the 60 has to be that building block times the square root of 3. We can do it again over here. Identify the 30 degree angle. Look across from it. I have an x. That's my building block. The hypotenuse has to be double it, which gives me the equation 2x is 10. And if 2x is 10, that means x has to be equal to 5. It's just that simple. Once I know that x is 5, that's my building block. 
I know that y has to be the building block, 5, times the square root of 3. And that's all you have to do. Now there's one more wrinkle we can throw at you, kind of like the 4590. Here's a couple of 3090s. Let's approach them the same way. Let me just make this one a touch bigger. Okay. So I'm going to identify the 30 degree angle and look across from it. This time, my building block is x, just like before. So I go to my hypotenuse. Ah, I don't have a number at the hypotenuse either. It's another variable. So let's keep going. I know that the hypotenuse is double my building block. What about this side that I have a 6? Isn't this the side that is my building block times the square root of 3? Right? So there's an equation here. This triangle is telling me that x times the square root of 3 has to equal 6. Well, we can handle this. We're going to apply the same logic we did to the isosceles right triangle. Something times rad 3 has to equal 6. Well, notice there's no radical over here. That means at least there needs to be a square root of 3 in there. That way I'm squaring the square root of 3 and I'm going to get rid of the radical. Well, what else has to be there? Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3, so I still need to multiply by 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And that's what my x is. x is 2 rad 3. Now that I've got my building block, the hypotenuse is double it, just like any other time. So this is 2x, right? And since x is 2 rad 3, that means it's 2 times 2 rad 3, which is just 4 rad 3. That's all you got to do. No heavy lifting, no Pythagorean theorem, no complicated formulas. All we're doing is following the pattern every time. I'll take you through one more like this. Find the 30 degree angle. Look across from it. I've got x. So I go to the hypotenuse next because it's going to be double that building block. But unfortunately, the hypotenuse is a variable again. So I move on to the other side. This is the side that's my building block times radical 3. So this is telling me that x rad 3 has to equal 15. And if x rad 3 equals 15, then we're just going to apply that same logic. Since there's no fit, excuse me, since there's no radical on the right hand side of this equation, the radical must have been squared. So I have a square root of 3. Radical 3 times radical 3 undoes the radical, so now you just have 3, and what do you still need to multiply by to get 15? 5. So this is telling me that x is 5 rad 3. That's my building block, and once I know that, the hypotenuse is simply double it, right? y is going to equal 2x. If x is 5 rad 3, then 2 of them is 10 rad 3. And that's about as hard as these really get. One last thing I'll show you, just a quick example with a 35, 60, 90, excuse me, 30, 60, 90, and a 45, 90, is, because uh, I don't think I worked one of these in before. So if across from my 30, I look there and I see the x, that's my building block. I go to the hypotenuse, no dice, but I go to the side across from the 60 and I'm in business. This is the side that is my building block times rad 3. So hopefully you see if x rad 3 is 7, x is going to have to be 7. So this one's pretty quick, right? You can tell us exactly what x has to be x times rad 3 is 7 rad 3, so x is 7, and then your hypotenuse is double that, or 14. Over here in the 4590, a similar situation. The x is the legs, and this is the side that's x times rad 2, if you go back and remember that pattern. So we very quickly get x equals 12. And that's pretty much all the basic scenarios you run into with these isosceles right triangles. And so you can pause the video on this slide if you like. I just have kind of an overview for you of the two rules. 4590 or isosceles right triangle, whatever the leg is, the hypotenuse is simply that number times the square root of 2, or symbolically x, x, x rad 2. And for the 30, 60, 90 triangle, you look for the angle that's 30. Across from that, whatever that number is, that's your building block. The hypotenuse is double it, and the other side is that number times rad 3. Or symbolically, across from the 30, whatever that is, x, the hypotenuse is double, 2x. And the side across from the 60 is that number, x, times the square root of 3. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it just in the comment, or you can send me an email. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.